Western Europe, the UK, much of Western US and parts of Canada all under drought watch right now as hot and dry conditions continue through the second half of the summer. It seems obvious that high temperatures lead to extended drought conditions, but it's not as straightforward. First of all, that's because our high temperatures often come with a high pressure system. That means sinking air as that high uh, basically cooks air at ground levels in what we've come to know on the West Coast as a heat dome. But that sinking air also means it limits the formation of clouds, which is why so often high temperatures means little rainfall. The second factor to high temperatures bumping up drought conditions is the fact that higher temperatures means more evaporation. So in a warming climate, we will see more evaporation of the moisture in soils, and that means a quicker drying out of the ground below. Finally, when we do get rain, that often can lead to flash flooding. Take a look at this mini experiment from the University of Reading where you can see this, the moisture content of grasses really leads to the absorption of water in different ways. A dry baked ground often becomes compacted as the moisture is taken from it. So it almost acts as a barrier to incoming rainfall. Uh, the, the sand particles almost become hydrophobic and that means runoff and potential uh, flash flooding. It's something that we have seen in Western parts of North America. As for this current drought, long range forecast models continue to bring hot and dry weather to much of the northern latitudes, perhaps pointing back to a heat wave in the northern Pacific. La Nina is expected to kick in for the winter, which usually means colder and wetter for most, most of the northern latitudes. And now you're Science Smart. If you have a science question on your mind, send me a tweet. I'll try to get it answered.